Bushcraft Global has invited Innerbark Outdoors on their first expedition into the Amazon. Join me as I experience the culture and learn how the indigenous people thrive. The bows found in the Amazon jungle are simplistic and therefore pretty easy to make compared to more modern bows. This bow is a hybrid between a more traditional bow used by Amazon natives and a more modern bow. The common bow material here in the Amazon is the walking palm. The walking palm is easy to identify because the palm tree essentially stands up on stilts which are roots. And the roots are spiked, which are pretty easy to spot. Chopping through them with a machete is pretty easy work, especially with the right machete. Here in the Amazon, it's pretty common to get what we in North America call widowmakers. But for people that live here, they pretty much just call it another walk in the park. After the tree's downed, we go ahead and start making wedges in order to split the wood. The wedges that they use here in South America are a lot different from what I'm used to using up in North America. In North America, wedges are generally hammered in with either a baton or a maypole on an axe. But here, it's all about precision. Like that. <laughs> so consistency and accuracy are big factors in the way they use wedges down here. Rodolfo uses his hand to figure out how many pieces of bow material we can rip out of a single piece. In this case, it's three. And the same process is done to split these as it was to split the whole thing. If you're strong enough, after the initial split, you can go ahead and rip them apart with your own hands. Now it's time to start working the material. The white inner part is soft and is not part of the actual bow, so it's the first thing to go. During this process, the entire bow is also thinned out by taking out material from the back side. Diagonal chops are made into the side of the bow in order to give it a general profile. This prevents some weird splitting that might happen if you just shaved it normally. Later that night, we went and did the final shaping with the machete. While bracing the bow, Rodolfo uses the machete and planes off very thin curls of the material. And later that morning, we started tillering. Because we didn't want to cut any of the grain, which would create a weak spot, we used our knives and machetes as sort of like a file card so that it takes off material but in a very gentle way. 
we wanted to make sure that the bow flexed very evenly throughout its length. After the tillering, we remove the outer bark. This is very important not to scratch the outer surface because damage to the outer surface will cause a catastrophic failure. The final part of the bow shaping was to put in the notches for the bowstring. Because I'm using more modern arrows to shoot this, I'm deciding to use a more modern string, instead of the ones made out of bark or vine in the Amazon. And I'll do a video on making one of these bowstrings later on. This bow is really fun to shoot, so much in fact that I forgot that it wasn't a modern bow. Which means that I started shooting it like a modern bow, which is a big no-no. People in the Amazon don't pull their bows back nearly as far as we do, so boom, that's what happens. And these materials that they're limited to down in the Amazon kind of have their limitations, which is really unfortunate because this bow shot very well. Stay tuned for next week's video where we set up a trap line. Inner Bark Outdoors coverage of the Bushcraft Global Expedition is brought to you by Tops Knives, the operator's edge. And prepare one. Prepare today, ready tomorrow.